Butterflies, to me at least, are most associated with Y2K era tattoos, various feminine paraphernalia, or out of touch artists with decaying taste, and that one SpongeBob scene. By way of their unique process of metamorphosis, they have been a site of constant intrigue throughout history and across cultures. Where the moth is a known symbol of gothic taste, symbolic of decay and death, perfectly displayed in the beautiful McQueen Voss show, Spring Summer 2001, the butterfly has been a symbol of a more multifaceted nature. We'll look at their association with sexual violence and sensuality, chaos theory, and our basic attraction to whimsy across history and cultures. If we regard the flight path of the butterfly, the skittish mode of flying portrays an unpredictability, the perfect visual explanation of the butterfly's common presentation of the human soul. Equally, the colourful transformation from caterpillar to free-winged butterfly is arguably similar to what is believed by many cultures across history and today, that there is a separation of the ethereal mind from the carnal body and the release of the soul in the afterlife. The Greek word for butterflies in the soul is the same, psyche. When something suddenly swims into view, inches from your face, it comes up at you, first in the usual blur, and then quite suddenly snaps into focus, revealing its form, its solidity, its hard-edged outline. Over perhaps a second, this butterfly changed from a formless motion to a soft, fawn-coloured blur, and then, as it settled and flattened its wings against the hot brickwork, it turned into a painted lady. It had flesh-brown wings, flushed with salmon pink, in a pretty latticework of black, like a glimpse of a sunset through a thorn bush. The black tips of its forewings contained a circlet of white spots, like dabs of snow melting on a slate. These words by Peter Marin, whose book is in the description, are accompanying an experimental demonstration of the butterfly effect. All pendulums start at the exact same position, but due to chaos theory, we watch them gradually fall out of sync with one another, each forming their own path of movement. Chaos theory is a branch of mathematics which outlines that behavior is highly sensitive to any small changes in conditions, leading to results on any side scale. Alan Turing said in 1950, the displacement of a single electron by a billionth of a centimetre at one moment might make the difference between a man being killed by an avalanche a year later or escaping. The butterfly effect has been explored greatly in literature, but today is most often used to emphasise the sensitive nature of our planet Earth and the damage we're bringing to it, even on an individual scale. Butterflies can be used as a pictorial device, often known to be seen in a pastoral scene, thanks to their blaringly obvious beauty. In works like Gainsborough's The Painter's Daughters Chasing a Butterfly, the creature is the pseudo-focal point, providing a perfect anchor to the picture, allowing for the enactment of whimsy of the young girls who really take centre stage. Equally, the attraction of depicting the animal of metamorphosis can be read here as the girls chasing maturity. They are yet to transition into womanhood. Likewise, in this work by Berta Morisot called Hunting Butterflies, there is an idyllic scene depicted, featuring a slow-moving handful of figures who pass their time without real purpose, enjoying each other's company. The loose breaststrokes depict an equally unkept natural environment, which allows for the man-made utensil of capturing, the net, to stand out with its rigid handle that cuts through the pitch plane. It's a light-hearted scene and typical of Morisot's subject matter, that being the depiction of the often unseen lives and activities of women away from the public sphere. In his book Rainbow Dust, Three Centuries of Delight in British Butterflies, writer and naturalist Peter Marin notes the repeated depiction of butterfly hunter-collectors as obsessives. While it's a practice tied to entomology, Marin notes that there are many iterations since the 19th century which have grown to associate the interest and collection of butterflies with societies more socially abnormal. He speaks of John Fowle's book, The Collector, which is a thriller about a lonely young man who kidnaps an art student who he crushed on, consequently trapping her in his basement. He is a part-time butterfly collector on the side. 
The entrapment of the beautiful young woman comes to be a metaphor for the, for the capture and display of the butterflies. Butterflies as living things, once dead, become a small but beguiling object, suggestive of a rich and far afield tapestry, which holds our attention so intensely it can lead some to obsession, and in the case of this story, a perversion. Vladimir Nabokov, author of Lolita, famed band book and band cubic film for descriptions of paedophilia, which form the core of the story, was an avid collector of butterflies, even discovering his own subspecies, the Nabokov blue. Nabokov would decipher amongst species by dissecting and then microscopically examining their genitalia. He completed 22 scientific papers on butterflies, giving several lectures and travelled all over America throughout his life on the search for the specimens. It has been said by many that Nabokov's obsession with butterflies was one and the same to Lolita's protagonist, Humbert Humbert's unsettling thirst for underage nymphets. Once again, butterflies are the underlying symbolism to a story of sexual deviance. The aesthetes of the art for art state movement in the late 19th century Europe were too interested in butterflies. It chimed with that beautiful decadence which overrode the theme of the art and literature of the movement. James Abbott McNeil Whistler even adopted the butterfly as his own artist's signature. Do watch my vid on Whistler for more on that if interested. Into surrealism, professional dreamer Remedios Varro's Boy and Butterfly is reminiscent of a Renaissance painting but instead of a dove with wings outstretched, it's a butterfly with the head of a lady. She flies directly above him as if to protect him, like a flying shelter. Gallery Wendy Norris, who have a great collection of Varro's, very few works, say that the boy in the work is Varro's son, Xavier. Varro saw that her son was truly gifted, so she became his mentor as an artist. Xavier himself said that his mother told him sometimes he looked so melancholic as if he had a black butterfly over him. Here he is depicted as young, his maturity ahead of him, as he heads unhappily through an enclosed path with high walls. There is floating white somethings which resemble amaretti biscuit wrappers floating around his feet, disregarding gravity and implying either a breeze or the weightlessness of the dream realm. Black butterflies are also among the most important insects within pre-Hispanic mythology. The colour of the black butterfly's wings was a symbol of the night, and they believed it had the power to render people invisible and invincible. It had two contradictory qualities. It simultaneously represented protection from evil and a malefic spirit itself. I want to end our foray into butterflies and art with the butterfly building in Vrilyagmeni, Greece, which is actually yet to be built. The design by 314 Architecture Studio contains four properties, one in each upper and lower part of the wing. The design is lightweight, with plenty of view glass throughout, which is often used instead of walls. The glass maintains the ethereal atmosphere as well as maintaining privacy. Likewise, the wings are bent to provide privacy. There are artificial lakes which outline the contour of the butterfly seen here in the floor plan, which retain the presence of nature, which, as it stands, is plentiful in this coastal part of the world. According to the Chinese philosophical classic Zhuangzi, the great Taoist thinker of that name fell asleep one day and dreamed that he was a butterfly. When he woke up, he did not know whether he really was a man who had dreamt he was a butterfly, or whether he was a butterfly now dreaming he was a man. The story is meant to represent the dissolving of the human ego into nature. We have seen the push and pull between freedom and capture, present in butterflies, and this dynamic alone can lead to carnal sensations of titillation, which is often seen that butterflies are involved in stories containing characters of sexual deviance. The butterfly has been representative too of a darkness, their astounding beauty being a natural magnet for gothy depictions. I want to mention Matthew Wilson's Thames and Hudson book titled The Hidden Language of Symbols, which was a great help to the research of this video. And now on to some channel housekeeping. I extend a great thank you for bearing with my at times unchronological arrangements. Sometimes the thematic videos get me excited and a free flow of thinking is what we get as a result. 
If anything, I wish to instill the spirit of research and hopefully at least you've learned something new. I wish also to apologize for the long lapse in time since my last video. It would appear young London life is getting to me and I've been spreading myself rather thin. Truth be told, I really enjoy making these videos, but the nature of the desire to remain faceless requires a lot more sourcing and resultant editing time. I hope you can bear with me, but do please let me know if there are topics you would like to see explored in the future. And as always, thank you so kindly for watching. I shall see you next time. Uh,